Board of Supervisors and the Employer of City Council. May I have a roll call, please? Ms. Dunn? Here. Ms. Bush? Here. Ms. John Gilliam? Mr. Rook? Mrs. Roberts? Here. Mr. Pierce? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your grace and mercy. For without your grace and mercy, none of us would be here today. As we begin this joint meeting, I pray for the gift of love, grace, and homelessness. Grant all of the interested parties that are gathered here this evening with the wisdom, knowledge, and humility, and understanding to make decisions that are in the best interest of all those we are elected or appointed to serve. I ask that you guide each of us to engage in meaningful and respectful discussions. Please grant us the ability not to allow personal feelings or strife to present us from making decisions that we need to make in order to improve the quality of our children's education. And Lord, let those decisions be made in equity and equality. May the integrity of charity of our soul be the source that guides our work this evening. I now place this meeting in your hands, Lord. Amen. Can I get approval of the city of the Greensburg County School Board agenda? Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor, let me know by the sign. Aye. Aye. All opposed, have heard none. Our agenda has been approved. I believe the city is up now to open their meeting. And after the city opens their meeting, the county will follow. We're calling the employee city council to order. Ms. Wilkins, can you call the roll, please? Mr. Harris, please participate in virtual. Ms. White. Ms. Temple. Here. Ms. Mercer. Here. Mr. Simons, participate in virtual. Mr. Drake. And Ms. Hines. Thank you. Can I get a motion to approve the agenda? All in favor, let us say the non sign of All opposed, motion has been carried. I'd like to call the order of the board and supervisor to meet the order. Ms. H. Brown, Mr. Brown, Aye. Mr. Payne, Aye. Mr. Kramer. Can we get approved of uh, approval of the dinner? Mr. H. Brown, Mr. Brown, Aye. Mr. Kane, Aye. Mr. Conner. Good evening, school board members, board of supervisors, and Mrs. Carson, city councilors, and Mr. Johnson. It is our pleasure to present to you the Greenville County School Board Green budget for fiscal year 2022. Before we get started, on behalf of the board, I would like to thank the governing bodies for your support of the school system and in particularly our students. This year has been a tough year for all of us. 
due to COVID-19, we have had to endure situations that we never thought we would have to endure as a nation, as a community, and definitely as a school system. But I believe that working together, we will continue to not only survive COVID, but we will thrive. Mrs. Parson and staff of the Gold Valley Commons, thank you for hosting us tonight to make sure that we were all social distance and, um, and keeping each other safe. So thank you. In your packets tonight, you have the following information. The presentation that you can see on the screen, the recapitulation worksheets, the GCPS budget worksheet summarizing I'm sorry, worksheet summary outlining in more specific detail the new budget request. The 2022, the 2026 prioritized CIP request and paper put together in the very back of your packet are old CIP requests that have been submitted since 2017. And that's for your bedtime reading. The mission statement of Greensboro County Public Schools, which is the driving force and cultivator of excellence, we are committed to educating the whole child, making sure that they achieve their dream of being productive citizens in a competitive global society. And those students will be guided by committed educators in partnership with family, schools, and the entire community. This past school year, we have had to live out this mission statement. No longer were the educators in the schoolhouse solely responsible for educating children, but that partnership of family and home, community and school, excuse me, and school was very evident last year. And we want to thank our families, our parents, and our communities for working with us as we guided our students during this time. Our agenda tonight is simply to share budget priorities and concerns, to share budget highlights, the savings and increases, to review federal, state, and local revenue, to share our GTPS school board approved fiscal year 22 uh, budget, and to review capital improvement projects and CARES Act funding. Our budget priorities are to improve student achievement. That is why we are in the game of education, to make sure that our students are achieving at the highest level possible. To address unfinished learning, um, COVID-19 calls us, as you all know, to shut down schools on March 13, 2020. And we were out of school for a very, very, very long time. As such, our students' learning halted. And we don't want to say that it is a learning loss because all learning is a game. But certainly, we have some unfinished business with our students' learning. And so we will be plugging the catch-up game for many, many years to remediate those skills that our students miss during the closing of school, and then to also accelerate them for their new learning at the same time. And in order to address our students, to improve student achievement and un address unfinished learning, we definitely need to provide safe facilities. This pandemic has caused us to really take a hard look at our facilities. And one of the mitigating strategies for the COVID-19 pandemic was to make sure that the air quality is of a high Quality. And we notice and know that we have issues with that, especially in some of our older buildings. And we've had to address that using some of our care strategies. Our budget concerns are always the continued reduction in enrollment, an unstable economy, remaining competitive with salaries in order to um, provide a high quality learning experience for our students, we need to attract and retain high quality staff members. And securing funding for capital improvement projects and facilities. 
And at this time, I will turn it over to Ms. Hargrove, who is going to share some of our budget highlights, and then I will come back before you and talk about some of the new requests in this camp budget. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. As Dr. Evans mentioned, I'm here to go over some budget highlights. Um, since we received the majority of our funds from the state, let's take a look at a few of the state budget highlights. Uh, this is the second year of the biennium. If you know that the state um, reevaluates their budget um, every two years, this is the second year of the biennium. Um, every year, sales tax and lottery revenue is updated. So, therefore, in this budget, um, the updated sales tax and lottery revenue was updated. As you can imagine, um, this was um, really affected by the COVID 19 pandemic. The economy suffered, and this uh, affected the sales tax revenue. Uh, we'll see how that directly affects us in a few slides. Also, included in the state's budget is a uh, 5% um, raise. Salary increase for SOP positions. Uh, state, the state funds um, SOP positions, which includes teachers, school counselors, librarians, instructional aides, um, principals, and assistant principals through the SOQ staffing standards. School divisions that certify to um, DOE that a minimum average compensation supplement of 2% will be provided to all school divisions. Um, if school divisions that provide less than a 5% compensation supplement, but greater than or equal to the 2%, then um, in the 2022 biennium will receive a prorated state payment. So therefore, um, there are going to be funds in the state budget up to 5% increase for staff. However, if you decide to give less than that, then that amount that's coming from the state will be prorated. And the state does only fund for SOP positions. So therefore, we will ask the locality to fund those other positions just to be fair and everyone gets the same rates. Also, they're restoring um, state funding for the Virginia Preschool Initiative. Um, a lot of our mandates and initiatives from our last school year's budget was cut because of the pandemic and the loss in state um, revenue sales tax. So therefore, this budget is restoring those funds. Also, we will receive additional state funding for school counselors. There was a mandate put in place um, last year, and this year we're receiving funding from that. The ratio for all schools is 325 to 1. Um, so therefore, um, you'll see later on in the request for school counselor because we need additional counselors according to our student enrollment. There's also um, providing uh, funding for a no loss program. And when they say no loss program, um, the funds we received this year would be based on um, actual enrollment from our September 30th um, student count. And those funds are there to supplement any of the other state funds provided through direct aid for public education. So therefore we won't see a, a reduction in our funds for student loss because you know we get funded from the state on basis of our ADM. So therefore, we see a reduction in our enrollment, then we will receive a reduction in the state funds. But this is second place so that um, we won't experience that this year. Okay, let's look at our budget directly. Let's start with some savings. Always good to find some savings in your budget. This year, we have a savings in the debt service category for a little over uh, $18,000. We're not closing any debt service accounts this year, but we will see some savings from the interest, which comes in at $18,200. There's also um, quite a few one-time expenditures in this current year's budget um, that will be about available for the next budget um, cycle, and that amounts to a little over $880,000. So our total savings for this for next year's budget is $897,882. Okay, and when they come to savings, right around the corner are the increases. Here are some of the mandatory increases um, in the upcoming budget. Our custodial contract is asking for an increase of 2.2%. 2 
due to the governor passing the rate change for minimum wage. We had to take on some of that cost, and that's $11,800. Also, there's an increase in our maintenance contract due to equipment coming off of warranties and um, and going on to our preventive maintenance plan. So that increase would be $15,200. And also, we are experiencing another increase in health insurance this time. Um, not a major one, but 3.7% increase, which totals $71,470 which totals our mandatory increases in this budget would be $98,470. Next slide, please. Now let's take a look at the potential impact these initiatives would have on um, our schools um, with state funding. Um, first of all, as I mentioned before, you are, um, we are compensated on a per pupil basis for state revenue. Um, last year's budget at ADM was um, 2075. Um, this year's budget will be based on 2,040 um, students. That's a reduction of 35 students. Therefore, the enrollment goes down, so will our state revenue. So let's see where we stand. The first category is the standards of quality programs. Um, that holds all of our uh, sales tax, our basic aid, our retirement, all the programs we need to operate as a school division. Um, we are seeing a decrease in that, a little over 52,000, and that is because of our enrollment. Our enrollment is still decreasing. However, the next category is our incentive programs. And in that category, you see that we see a healthy increase, a little over a um, million dollars there, because that is where our no loss funding is housed and also our compensation supplement for the 5%. Our kind of normal programs will be decreased by a little over uh, almost fifty thousand dollars, and that is due to um, a decrease in the area of homebound services. Our lottery funded programs will see an uh, increase um, because of at risk funding. We're going to receive an additional at risk at risk funding, and then unfortunately, our food service department will um, see a decrease of thirteen thousand dollars. They are reimbursed for. On the they are um, compensated on the reimbursement status, so therefore, um, with 2020, we're going to see that decrease of $13,000. So overall, though, uh, we are seeing an increase in our state funding of one million of one point seven million dollars. Okay, now to the local funding. Um, I'm pretty sure you all are familiar with the local composite index, also known as the LCI. Um, The composite index um, determines the school division's ability to pay education costs to the Commonwealth standards of quality. Those, those, those are those programs that's required. Um, Virginia calculates the composite index of local ability to pay every two years. This is the second year of the biennium, so you operated on this um, index last year as well. Uh, the composite index is calculated using three indicators of the county's ability to pay. Um, that's the true value of real property, adjusted gross income, and taxable retail sales. And so that's how the composite index is calculated. Also, required local effort is calculated on school divisions annually to show that the degree to which each school has met, failed to meet, or suppressed its required local expenditure in support of the standards of policy. Each locality, the, the city council and the board of supervisors has always met the required local effort and um, beyond. The required local effort is for those SOP programs that are required to operate. The required local match is those programs that we choose to participate in, such as like the Virginia Preschool Initiative. And uh, we would like to thank you for all of your funding throughout the years and how you have been over beyond um, funding us with the required local effort in, in meeting those requirements. Um, on a state average, all school divisions meet this match and go over about 89%. So we're, we're thankful for that. Okay, here's um, a high graph of our uh, revenue sources. As you can see, the majority of our funds come from the state at 58%. Next uh, is you all, the city and the county funds at 27%, and 
And then our federal funds increased this year at 13% and our other funds at uh, 2%. And those other funds include things like our rebates, um, E-rate reimbursement, um, rents of school buses and, and, and different local uh, funds on that basis. Thank you about that. I'll get the slide and film right here. Um, our federal funds operate a little differently than our other funding. They don't necessarily coincide with our fiscal year, which runs from July to June. Most of the grants end in September of each year. So the figures that I have here are adjusted to add in unencumbered funds that will carry over into next fiscal year. And also remember that expenditures for these funds have already been approved by grant applications. And these applications have been amended as needed and funds will be encumbered by the due date. With that being said, let's let's see um, if we have an increase in the we have an increase in the following programs. Title One um, is our programs that we use at GES and BES. Title Two is our uh, grant funding that we use for professional development. Title Four um, assists us with student support and uh, healthy. Um, Classrooms. Title IV is on um, rule and low income, which assists us with preschool initiatives and family engagement. Our uh, Title VI B grant um, is for our uh, students with special needs uh, in early childhood special education. Our uh, 21st century grants are for our uh, after school programs or before school programs. And our Perkins um, grant is uh, funds our CT program. So all of these will experience an increase in the coming year. However, our food service department, which receives a grant from the USDA, will see a decrease of thirty-seven thousand eight one hundred and eighty-five dollars due to the decrease in enrollment in food service. So that subtotals um, six hundred and twenty-five thousand five hundred and sixty-one dollars. However, this year we received uh, several different um, funds of CARES. Act funding from the federal government, they have really um, been generous in trying to help us do this pandemic. Um, the second round is what I have included in the budget, and we call that the ESSER II funds. And for these funds, um, we are receiving a little over 3.3 million. So therefore, the overall increase for federal funding will be uh, approximately 3.9 million. And as you can imagine, with those increased federal funds comes increased scrutiny and increased um, direction for what you can use those funds for and what you cannot use those funds for. So our new budget request for the upcoming year includes the increase in our health insurance, our increases um, that Mr. Tarbro spoke about with the custodial services contract and in the Honeywell contract for equipment and services. Personnel is, our, is the largest portion of our budget this year as the school division continues to focus on transforming our school system. It is important that we have the right people in place. Thanks to the governing bodies support last year, we were able to split that assistant superintendent position into two positions, one that focuses solely on instruction and the other that focuses on human resources. And as we continue to move towards full accreditation, we are focused on providing the instructional support to meet the needs of all of our students and the mandates of the state. We know that when our students return to in-person learning, they will have great instructional needs, and we need to be ready to address those needs. The school board is dedicated to attracting and retaining a quality workforce. 
And that dedication is reflected in our budget by a 3% raise in step increase. And if you want to see these, I'm not going to go over every new budget request in detail, but if you look in your packet, you will see a green sheet. Packet that looks like this is green. It goes over each one of the new requests in great detail. And it also tells where it is connected to our corrective action plan. And I did not say this, and I don't think it um, needs to be said, because I think we all know that Greenfield County Public Schools is operating under a memorandum of understanding with the State Department of Education and has a corrective action plan. So these positions, um, each position is listed here, and we will highlight some of them. Um, the state has also revisited the mandate to provide more counselors in the school division and has reduced the per student ratio to 325. In order to meet this mandate, we need to hire two full-time counselors. Testing is a huge responsibility that the state is shifting away from guidance counselors. They want guidance counselors to serve more as counselors to students, advising them on the correct courses to take, how to prepare for graduation and beyond, and not so much on testing. However, testing is still a huge part of our program. We test almost all year long at the high school because we are on a four by four schedule. The elementary, I'm sorry, the middle school has two courses that's on the four by four, so they are testing more frequently. And at the elementary school, there has been a jump in testing because they are now able to um, do expedited retakes. So if you score within a certain um, point from your passing proficient rate of your SOL, you can take it again, which increases the number of tests that are offered in the school. So the board has dedicated um, resources to providing school test counselors, I'm sorry, school test coordinators to prepare for and take care of the testing in the schools, to provide the data, analyze the data, and share that data with administration. At Wyatt Middle School, we are seeing a need for an instructional coach. When we get to the high levels and our students are three and four years behind, that calls for a special skill set in order to teach our children. If you are a secondary teacher, you know your content pretty well. And let's take reading for an example. You can teach those strategies and teach those contents. You may not have all the skills that you need to teach a beginning reader at the secondary level. And you will need that because the expectation is at that grade level, the students are proficient. And so we need some support because literacy continues to be an issue for Greensville County Public Schools. And we have a lot of attention and focus there at the elementary school, but we also have noticed we need it at the secondary level as well. Virtual learning has taken a toll on all of our students, and especially our students with disabilities will need additional support when they return to school. Therefore, the school board supports the hiring of an educational diagnostician and a compliance specialist. Students with individual education plans and 504 plans must be, their accommodations must be monitored closely. And if we are not providing the services that are required in the student's IEP or 504 plan, then we become out of compliance and that, my friends, is a big problem. So we need someone to make sure we that we are in compliance with these IEPs and 504 plans from pre-K all the way up to 12th grade. Some of our smaller personnel items includes the change of our instructional technology resource teachers 
to 11 months and an additional computer technician. Virtual learning shifted Greensville County Public Schools to a one-to-one -one division almost overnight. When our students were went home in March of 2020, we still had to provide learning opportunities for them. And we had to provide every student with a device in order to access their learning opportunities. We were previous, we were not a one-to-one -one device. In the buildings, we had devices, but every child did not have one at the elementary level, pre-K through fifth grade. At the middle school level, they had a device, but they did not take it home. And at the high school, they could take their devices home. Well, we went to a one-to-one -one division instantly so that we could continue to provide services to our students, which means that our three-person technology department has been working over time to not just secure the devices that we needed, but to make sure they were imaged and uh, cleaned up properly so that we could not access sites that we other inappropriate for our students. And then they had the task of when the device broke, they had to fix it. When the student could not get into the device, they had to help them. So we are looking for an additional computer um, technician to support all of these devices that we have in place. And our instructional resource teachers were amazing during this time. And they had to help our teachers adjust to virtual teaching and learning. So their workload almost tripled since March of 2020 because they had to provide the support to not just teachers, but administration and the superintendent <laughs> to make sure that we were providing students with what they need. Um, the increase in technology, of course, we know is due to the pandemic. There are some other personnel things that's there um, as well. Um, we have a new program, the Virginia Graduates uh, Program, and that program is designed to assist students with um, choosing a career path to follow and help them find jobs after um, high school if they choose not to go off to college. Our instructional programs have all been vetted by our Department of Instruction and our liaison with the Department of Education, Dr. Johnson. Our programs are selected with the purpose of providing support, instructional support to our students in the form of unfinished learning. We know that when our students come back, we are going to have to provide remediation, intervention, and acceleration for our students. We are going to have to provide that in the small group setting. We're going to have to provide that support in the learning labs. And we're going to have to provide that support before and after school. And so we know that our students can now access learning at home. And these programs will continue to help us um, help them while they're at home because they can still access these programs and get the help that they need when they come to school the next day. Our, some of these programs, and I need to talk to the board about this, so Ms. Dunn, please don't kill me because I haven't talked to you about this yet. But many of these programs we, um, can be used. We have a new round of CARES funds coming that we know of. And so we're looking at these programs to see if these programs can be purchased using our CARES fund money. And because this is the board's approved budget, I cannot make that decision without talking to the board first. And so we'll discuss that at our April 12th board meeting. Next, we have our departmental request, and each department submits requests for a different item, and those items are listed. We want to look at a new accounting software 
and for our transportation department. We're looking at diagnostic scan tools. And we want to provide professional development for our bus drivers and our mechanics. We are all about teaching and learning. And sometimes in the school division, we don't promote that for some of some of the classes of employees. And our transportation department is making sure that our most precious resources are safe on the road. And so they need to be able to continue their learning and know all the latest tricks of the trade to make sure that our buses and our cars are running effectively. We also have um, just the typical split units when um, items are out of warranty or they're old and need to be replaced. Um, general yearly maintenance contracts that we have that you all see every year. And also like our technology maintenance contracts that you guys see every year as well. Our career and technical education program, we are definitely looking at what programs can we offer our students to make sure that those students who choose to go straight to work after high school are able and ready to do that. And we just can't pick any old program because we need student interest. And so our students have completed surveys to give their interest in one of the newest programs that will be introduced to Greensboro County High School should this budget be approved is a nail tech program. Um, our students express great interest in that and we are trying very hard to make sure that in addition to offering programs that are viable for them, we need to make sure that we have student interest because you cannot invest a ton of money into a program that you don't have students signing up for and complete. Our capital improvement operating projects. And in this coming budget, we have a few items that we need to address. Our transportation department, um, replacing the bay doors at the bus garage, at the high school and middle school, the cover capstones to keep the water from running in between the buildings, between the walls of the building, at GES, the gutter repair or replacement, and also at GES, we have had a water issue that's been present since almost, I think, the building, the construction of the school. And we have contacted someone to come out and take a look and tell us what is the problem so that we do not have water. And when it rains hard, and I wonder about today, um, will we have water in the electrical sockets in some of our classrooms? So we have someone that's coming out to take a look and find out what that problem is. And then the Avenue Academy which is our program for alternative students. And we have included here renovation of the facility for the Adelaide Academy. And that Adelaide Academy is going to be a program for our students who, for whatever reason, are not successful in the regular school setting. However, we can't just throw those kids away. And we can't just put them in a building like well we got kind of because we don't want to deal with you anymore. We don't like you, we don't like your people, just go over here and sit in the corner and leave us alone. We are still obligated to educate those children. And we need to do so in a way that will cause them to want to change their behavior so that they can return back to their regular home environment. But it has to be innovative. It must be engaging, and it has to be more than complete this worksheet. And that's where in this program, everybody in this room is going to be important. And that's because you have a story to tell. I could have easily been in an alternative school program. 
I'll tell them that I used to be a fighter. I could have easily been in that program. But Jamie Williams, my 10th grade teacher, saw what you see standing in front of you today, back then, when I did it this year. And she talked to me. She called me a lady. I like that. I was like, wow, I'm a lady. Well, let me act like a lady. And so that's when you're going to play a role with those students and help them understand that they are something more than just what they see, that there's a whole world out there waiting on them. Not that they're waiting on the world, the world is waiting on them and the gift that they have to give. We just have to cultivate it. We just have to see beyond that facade that they put up and tell them, I believe in you. You can do this, and we will do this together. One of the things that you hear me say um, when I started here, there was a lot of talk about firing people. Fire this one, fire that one, fire this one. We don't just throw people away. We don't do that. Now, everybody's not going to come along with you, right? But we have an obligation, especially to our students, to grow them to put them in the best environment that they can be in and watch them work. You'll be surprised at what you get from them when you tell them, and not just tell them, but show them that you believe in them. And you let them see a little bit different than what they've been seeing, you'll be surprised at what they could do for them. So I'm excited about that, I believe, Kathy. I am because it's going to reach a population that many feel is unreachable. And I just don't believe that's true. We just have to do something different with that population because what we're doing does not necessarily work. So that is a summation, and Alicia's going to give you all the numbers and all that kind of good stuff of our new budget. Summary. This is the budget summary as it refers to expenditures. These are the categories um, that we use instruction, administration, and health, people, transportation, operations, maintenance, school food service, facilities, debt service, and technology. With all of the new expenditures and the mandatory increases, um, the total expenditures come to $38,570,128. Is looking at it um, in a different format. As you know, our business is education, and as you can see, the majority of our expenditures are categorized under the instructional um, category. Uh, next comes in uh, operations and maintenance at 8%. 7% is for our uh, transportation department, followed by our food service at 5%. And our administration and health at four, and then share at three percent by the debt service and technology categories. All right, the bottom line, the final budget um, summary with all the new requests that Dr. Evans just mentioned, our mandatory increases, our new budget total is thirty-eight around thirty-eight million dollars. We are anticipating receiving state funds at a little over 19.5 million. Our federal funds are coming in at 8.1 million. Other funds are coming in at 550,000. Therefore, that leaves an amount of local funds needed for this school budget will be a little over $10.3 million. That's an increase of $609,319 in local funds compared to this um, school's budget. Um, our budget this year is increasing by $6.2 million. However, with the increases in the state and federal funds, we're just actually for an additional $609,000 over what we received last year.
Um, you, this is a snippet of the revenue summary that's in your packet. I know the writing is probably small there, but this is inside of your packet. The red box is the amount that you uh, uh, that we allotted to us for this budget school year, and the upcoming budget is the one that's in green. At the far right hand side, you see the differences, our increases in our state funds, federal funds, um, the amount of our operations, and then um, the decrease for the debt service gives the additional cost of $609,319 requested from our local government funds. Okay, and as I will talk about the capital improvement project. In your packet, because the capital improvement project here is pretty small, but you have that sheet. So you have the sheet also in your packet. And each December, the school board presents to the um, county the capital improvement project request. And it's normally on a four or five year uh, cycle. And we always say that one of the questions is, like, when are you ready to proceed? And we always say, whatever year it is, like, they hope we are ready to proceed. Realizing that, and those of you who've been here since I've been here, I've said this since I've been here, there is no money tree, and you can't shake money out of a tree. I wish we could. I would have some nice shoes. But we have to make a plan for how we are going to address facilities with committed funding moving forward. And we don't have that. We have our requests. And then each year we don't really know what's going to be um, budgeted or approved. But long term, we have to start thinking about facilities because our facilities are not in the best shape, especially the high schools and especially Belfield. And the longer we wait, the worse the condition of the schools will be and the higher the price tag is going to go. So we've been very fortunate and very blessed this year to receive those CARES funds. The second round of CARES funds did allow for us to address some building needs. And you will see on our budget request, CARES funding, because we have included those items in our CARES application and CARES funding will take care of those. Okay. What you see highlighted in green are items that we will put into this next round of CARES funding for building needs. Mind you, we can't just say, you've given us this money, we're gonna do what we want to do with it. It must be approved. But we put that in there to show the faith that we are willing to work with both governing bodies and use the funding sources that we have to also address our facility needs. The roof repairs at EWY, um, that's in orange because we are not quite sure yet if that is an allowable expense. So we're checking and asking. Um, I wanted to do the don't ask, don't tell, we just put it in there and see if it go. <laughs> but I felt that it was important that I highlight that to you, you all, because we're not sure if that will be approved with this next round of CARES funding. But we are using the CARES funding as a level to take care and address some of these capital needs as well. So we did want to highlight that to you, and I cannot emphasize enough the need for a long-range plan for school facilities. And it's not going to happen overnight, but we have to start 
somewhere with that. And it could be in 2025, we're going to do this. And then in 2028, we're going to do that. And then in 2030, we're going to do this. But that's important to have so that when the school system, I don't think too much more cares money is going to come our way. But we can better utilize these funds if we know where we're going. And it also helps us present a better budget because we're not asking for things if we know that in two years, this is going to be taken care of. In three years, this is going to be taken care of. But the longer we wait to do that, the worse condition our schools will be and the higher the price tag is going to go. So we just wanted to share with you um, these requests and how we are using our CARES funds to take care of them. And a new building, um, a new high school, a new Bellfield Elementary, we have to start having those conversations for how we are going to do that. GES is our newest school, and it's time for a new roof for GES. And that's going to be a pretty good. So we have to um, come to the table and work together to address the needs. And, you know, I talk about the schools because that's where our kids and our teachers are. But the bus tra trans transportation, maintenance, the school board office. As we talked about COVID 19, you know how sometimes you know something, but you don't you really pay attention to something? There is no window in that building. So when you talk about air quality, there's a window. So go open window. If we think we can rain, we have to get up and go look out the door to see, is it raining? Is that rain, Alicia? <laughs> so when we start thinking about our facilities, um, and we talk about what we want our students to be able to know and be able to do. When we talk about attack, attracting and retaining high quality staff, then we need to make sure that our facilities are conducive to the learning that we expect our students to achieve and also for our teachers to teach it. So, Thank you for listening. Thank you all for coming out in the rain tonight. We appreciate being able to share this with you. Um, we will entertain questions at this time, or if you need time, like I would, to digest and, and think about it, you can share your questions with either Mr. Johnson or Ms. Carson, and we will be glad to um, send a response to you. Ms. Um, Dunn, would you like to have any words or go for me? I'd like to thank Dr. Edwards. I'm sorry. Good evening, Mr. Dunn. Uh, Desi asked a couple of questions. I think one of them, one of the better argument answers that I want to do about that. It appears all debt savings has been taken to operations, operations budget. Is that correct? And does this budget include any portions of the CIP request list? Can you repeat your question about the debt service? It appears all debt service savings has been taken into the operations budget. Yeah, so every year the debt service is a, is a piece of the operating budget. So whenever I see a savings in there, it comes it comes out of there every every year. Is that what you're asking? That's that's how I'm interpreting the question. Yes. And then the second question is um, this is this is not our question, but I'm gonna ask you to wait a second. Sure. One more question. The Santa Claus Biden's program includes any possible capital. I 
couldn't be in the answer a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. um, excellent question. As far as repairs or upkeep, but new buildings, new facilities, no. Thank you. You're welcome. Are there any more questions today? Comments? Well, I'd like to thank Dr. Evans and her staff for that very detailed budget that she presented to all of us. I'd like to thank the county and Stacey for the support that they have given the school division over the years. And I do hope that when you look over our budget, you will be as convinced as we are that we need every penny that we're asking for and our operating budget and our capital improvement budget and that soon and very soon we will all come together and start that plan for capital improvement that Dr. Evans just mentioned. Because she is so right. The longer we put it off, the higher it's going to get. And nothing is going to go away. The high school is not going to get any of that. It's going to get worse. So we need to do it now, you know. We tend to put things off. But the, what we need in capital improvement needs to be done now. But once again, we thank you all for listening. At this time, if no one, everyone is sure, their hearts and minds are clear, I'd like to ask the city to adjourn their meeting first, then the county will follow, and then I will adjourn the Greensville County Public School Board meeting. I just want to say thanks to Dr. Evans for and her staff for all the information. I do have to look over it to see. And if there are questions, I'll go back, Mr. Johnson. All right. I would like a motion to adjourn. All in favor, let me know that sign I. Meeting is adjourned. Get a rule that we are both supervisors of Jeremy until Friday, the second. Move the second to the Jeremy until Friday, on the table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, can I have a motion that the Greensville County Public School Board be adjourned, please? So, I move that we uh, adjourn the school board meeting. Janet made the motion, so you're going to second. Okay. All in favor, let it be known by the sign aye. 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 All opposed, having heard none, the Greenville County Public School Board is adjourned, and our joint meeting is now officially adjourned. Thank you.